Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, a treat, hot oil and grease. But hey man, if you want compact, I'm talking power, and you want it to last for a long, long time, you don't go with electronical stuff, motors and ICs and wires. No man, you go for hot oil. And this bad mamma jamma was sent to me by a kind soul who wished to remain anonymous, but thank you very much. We're going to use this. If we can get it to Chooch, we're going to use this for our hydraulic bartending robot. Despite this channel being subscribed to by ne'er-do-wells of every creed and color, I would be very surprised if anyone has had one of these things apart. It is a HIDAC rotary actuator. And this thing is mean. We're talking solid steel construction, full of hot oil, seals, gears, all sorts of weird shit. We're gonna pull her apart, see why she got the mark of the beast. Yes, I hear you, peanut gallery. You're saying talk, 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 BS. Nothing beats a servo motor in a gearbox. This thing over yonder here, huh? That's 31,000 foot-pounds of torque. And that means me, as a 200-pound gorilla, give or take 10%, would need a lever 160 feet long in order to get the same torque from my body weight as this thing puts out in, there we go, banana for scale, Fruk, the Fruk VC99, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I try not to shit on anybody, but the ask you should be questioning yourself is, how the fuck do they get that much torque out of something so small? I'm glad you arsed. We is gonna find out. So I'll just get the work clench cleaned up, what for not contaminizing the inwards, and uh, we'll have a look, I'll show you. Before I take it apart, I'm gonna show you what it does. Essentially, it replaces, it's a pivot. It replaces a pin and a big long cylinder with this very compact unit. It's a torque motor, essentially. If we can get it to move. Clearly, I'm going to have to half-ass it since the quarter-ass is not working. I was scrounged around in the bin for a couple hours. Found myself a Dash 6 to Dash 4 GIC adapter. As well as a F to F. Dash four, put all that on, yada, 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 and so forth, thereby increasing the chooch factor to the necessary 0.5. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. For you metric fans out there, that's anti clockward from the flywheel end. Proper torque achieved. Failure to chooch. I got about 90 PSI. You'd think that'd be enough. You will note this is still pressurized with air. And the dangerous thing about doing hydraulics with air is that when you're actually working on hydraulics, it's essentially an incompressible fluid. If you have air in there, air is a compressible fluid. So essentially you're putting a spring in there. Hey, you gotta watch that. You're essentially preloading a spring when you're jamming this full of air. Gonna have to go with Plan Charlie, and that's what happens sometimes. You bring a pea shooter to a pillow fight. Okay, got the old porta power out. Look at that. Blue hydraulic fluid. Looks pricey. 10,000 PSI ought to do the trick well. Ah, he's stuff. Uh, this, yeah. North America, man, we don't need any metric fittings. Curse you. These are stealth uh, mini mess, they call these M. Is when you take the, they're for, they're for test ports. But uh, I don't have anything that fancy that I can find offhand, so we're just gonna jam a regular or old quarter inch NPT. Good enough for old Grandpa McNamara, good enough for me, well. I got a 3,000 PSI gauge on a 10,000 PSI system. This is a 3,300 PSI actuator. So you gotta make sure that uh, you got your wits about you because 10,000 PSI in the wrong spot will turn you into dead. You're gonna have a bad time. Oh, 
Okay, you see how quick that came up to 1,000 PSI? We're either seized or we're bottomed out. So I'm gonna flip it around and we'll try it again. Hey, see. <laughs> exactly. I Instead of hitting the release, I hit the pump. It's just that easy. So for you kids at home, you start taking fittings off, especially hydraulic fittings, and there's oil leaking everywhere or pissing out, stop, put it back on, see where the pressure's coming from. Something's going on. Don't keep taking it off until it flies out and kills you. I'd also like to point out a, a very interesting cognitive bias in industry, whereby anybody dealing with electricity needs to be licensed and yada yada, you gotta be ticketed, you gotta have feet right up the wazoo, because you gotta be safe, you can't see these pixies, who knows what the hell's going on. But guys that work on hydraulic systems, anybody can pick up a wrench and undo something that's gonna kill them. Just because somebody hands you a wrench doesn't mean that you're qualified to take it apart. Just be careful. She's compact, but she's got a little bit of gravity in her. Oh my God. Once again, for the second time, She is pretty sticky though. Pretty sticky. There's some stictivity there, but we'll have to review the tape here to see at what point it uh, gives way. It actually moves. We're at 500 PSI, it hasn't moved. There's no load on it. No, something's, something's fucked. Something's proper fucked in that. Son of a diddly. Well, unlike most teardowns, we're actually justified in taking this one apart. Have I mentioned I've never had one of these apart? Should be an interesting, yeah, I've never had one of these apart. Should be an interesting challenge. But because I've never had it apart, we're gonna have some witless marks on here. Oh, and uh, always check to make sure there's not already some witless marks. Okay, we're safe. Now if we go through the regular routine and sits on the bench for two months, we'll be able to put it back together in the proper orientation. Because these are made in the US and A, I'm going to guess that these are manuel thread form. That is stalled out. Yeah, sure enough. God bless America. Little fun fact for you. Allen keys are normally made out of S2 tool steel, which is impact resistant. Good thing for us. I know the professional tradesmen in the crowd are just about throwing their 64 ounce big gulps at the screen because I'm not using an impact. Here's a little cl clip of the previous work we did for the hydraulic bartending robot, which was a positioning system where we used an Arduino, horror of horrors to all you PLC guys, to measure the distance traveled by a hydraulic cylinder by calculating the volume of air that had been uh, injected to it. And it worked surprisingly well within a sim, if I remember correctly. And the setup is the MSP430 Texas Instruments, a cheap little Chinese uh, flow meter that we're using to measure airflow. Little Chinese board there, relay board. 70s style Hustler Bush breadboard setup. And of course we got the monster cylinder. So we're gonna go ahead and measure the repeatability of this. Just uh, turn that a little bit. Uh, 46, 460 millimeters. Four, five, eight millimeters. Four, five, five. Plenty good enough for the girls I go out with. Well, that didn't help us very much, did it? We're not in. How in fuck nation does this come apart? Oh. <clears throat> A 
looks like it comes apart with the face spanner and there's some sediment screws in there. I'll loosen off the set screws there and then half, well, quarter ass a face pin spanner, see if we get her. If not, we'll have to make a tool. Because this is American design in Maine, I can't tell this is if this is half assery with the sediment screws here or if it's good because to drill these holes, you actually need to mill. You can't drill on an angle like that. The, the drill bit just, the split point drill bit just walks away. So you'd have to mill that and then drill it through or, you know, plunge mill, but, and tap as well. Interesting little design feature there. I have not a face spanner girthy nor long enough to handle this. That means we're going to have to make one. There's our perfect blueprint. Hyaw, hyaw. You know that crappy drill bit index from Guangzhou Charlie you just can't throw out because they're so cheap? Well, this is the reason you don't throw them out. They're going to be your pins in your face spin panner. Alright, put your welding shields down. You don't want to catch a terminal arc flash. More power, more better. Yeah! Then we get our thumb detecting nut fucker. Huh? Ça fit comme le gars d'O.J. Simpson. Of course, we could have put a nut on this and ratchet and all that stuff, but that would involve getting a nut and welding it on. You gotta watch when you're taking something like this apart because you don't know if there's a preload on it. If it doesn't loosen up as it's going up, you know, it'll be tight, tight, tight in some spots, but it should loosen up. If it's tight, tight, tight the whole way through, you're gonna wanna have a second glance and maybe sit and have a smoke and think about what the hell's going on because you don't want this thing flying off and killing somebody. Because that somebody is likely to be you. So there's the gland there. Now I'm just going to spin this. Let's see, we got oil. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Release the schmoo. Yay. Oh. So here's the gland. Here's the pistone. Piston seal. One way the bearing also known as the wear ring depending on who you talk to and what company you talk to and there's another pressure seal and here's the money shot here wait what Woo, huh? yeah fucking weird man well that's great that's just fucking great man now what the fuck are we supposed to do some real pretty shit now, man! Uh, here's the body of the rig, and there's the outside helical gear set, which meshes with this inside helical gear set. I'm gonna put the camera down, or maybe I don't have to, show you something that's gonna blow your mind. There's another helical gear set. Whoa! <laughs> So this is the actual moving piston. This is like the intermediate, just intermediate. Jesus. So this is the piston here. This is the thing that moves. And remember, the outside is the case. It's held stationary. So I can't quite get my head around how this actually turns this thing. I might need to go to an animation. 
but essentially this thing moves up it's held against the outside so I guess it has to turn which in turn makes this need to turn so the whole thing spin them at things I had a good look at all the heel gold gear teeth here and they're all fine on all three uh, one thing I see there is some contamination just there must have been some schmoo in the yeah in the hydraulic system itself that accumulated there but there's no metallic particles to speak of in that schmoo however there are some tiny metallic particles in the seals embedded in the seals and then in the wearing this plastic wearing you can see this was fairly heavily contaminated if we get the light here see all this scoring in the plastic normally you're in here you would replace the seals however this isn't really a proper seal it, it doesn't you don't need it to seal because this is self-locking when there's no pressure on it this thing cannot turn because it's it's like a a worm and wheel gearbox the if you turn the worm you can get the wheel to turn but if you turn the wheel the worm will not turn it locks so that's what this does and you saw that there was lubricant all over here there was hydraulic oil bathing this whole area so if you have a little bit of bypass flow it's not a big deal unless you get a lot and then the thing stops working or it overheats but in this case this is a very low duty and I've had a good look at this I feel comfortable putting this back together really not all that much to it I would have thought for 10 grand you'd get more titanium nitride and magic pixies now one beef I have about this is industrial gear with these printed out labels fucking garbage so labels don't last you paint over you know just fucking garbage but anyway I made a mistake this is the little brother so the torque isn't quite as high it's 25,000 inch pounds oh it's an inch pound well you might as well be talking Newton meters right divide that by 12 oh fuck division so uh, we'll multiply by uh, 1 over 12 is 9 close to 8 per 8 percent that's going to be right around 2,000 foot pounds I kind of zoned out on this for about five minutes and I figured out how it how it works why there's got to be three parts because if you just have the two parts it will turn but your cylinder in the middle your piston rod would have to move up and down right you don't want that so you need this needs to be intermediary and this needs to be the output and there might also be some gear reduction there uh, pretty yeah pretty tough to calculate gear reduction on something like this because it's going from linear to rotary so here's the gland the threaded gland and those are little balls I guess they're retained in there, but that's what the set screw. Well, it's got to be positioned properly so that goes in the dimple. Otherwise, you're going to mash over the threads and you'll never get the thing apart. Well, you say we give this old girl a whirl. Fucking A, thank you, brother. I'm so fucking stoked. Hey, man, I really appreciate you keeping your eye out in the scrap bin for something that may be salvageable, you know, junk, but to me is gold. And of course, the patrons that throw a few bucks in the hat every month, that is so helpful. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's interesting to see on aggregate what a core group of regular dudes can do. I mean, you're going to shit your pants here over the next six months at what we get done. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep your oil slick out of the crick.